We're going to take a look at our wood stabilization system here and uh, what's involved with it and the components and that kind of thing to, to stabilize wood. Wait, wait a minute, what do you mean by wood stabilization? Great question. Uh, what we're doing is taking wood most of the time that is very soft, that maybe it started to decay, maybe it's a really soft wood by its nature. Like spalted woods and those types of things. Exactly, okay. yes. So this and, is that real punky stuff that we took out of the woods? Yep, yep, from your place. And what we've done is we put it in one of these containers and we add resin and then we pull a vacuum with our vacuum generator on that wood and it pulls the resin in as it pulls the air out of the wood. And then we use a toaster oven to actually raise the temperature which makes this stuff react and solidify into a, a crystal uh, ice substance and it makes the wood solid and hard so that you can now turn stuff that you couldn't turn before. And there's some is other it, things. Is it easier to turn? Uh, well, it's easier from the standpoint that it doesn't tear out and, and the fibers don't tear and rip out of there so it leaves a better surface. And you can sand it? You can absolutely, you can sand it. You can finish it just as you would normally finish any other wood. What? It's, it's completely compatible. So it looks like it dries clear. It's basically clear, yes, except, for, as you can see with these pieces, if you choose, when you put the resin in, you can actually add color to it. Uh, we've got Is that these what five, these are? Yeah, those five colors that can be added. And these are some pieces that were done that way so that you can do that. And you could combine those colors too? You can. You can mix them to custom customize the, whatever colors you might be looking for. There's one other aspect to this as well. We have these dyes available that mix with alcohol instead of the resin. So that if you have wood, uh, this piece is maple, and it was hard maple. It didn't need to be stabilized. So I colored it just using the alcohol, which is a lot less expensive hmm. than the resin. So you can color pieces as well. Did you also it. use the vacuum chamber? Yes. Same, same process, basically, except then I don't need to... Uh, heat it to, to make it catalyze or anything, I can just... And that's why uh, this is sitting here? This is the, part of Yes. Uh, a simple toaster oven is all you need to, to do this uh, process. You don't need to use your oven upstairs and cause problems there. So. How, long, how long does all this take? Uh, it's a process that it's, it, it varies a lot because the wood is so different and there are key things that you can look at to, to determine that in rough terms, a couple of hours to do the whole process. Um, we do have another video that's, that's very detailed, much longer than this one, that covers all of these aspects and really shows you all the things that you can do with this system. We even have this bag that you can do large pieces like bowls that you can put in these bags as well. So uh, there's a lot, lot to this, lots of components, but uh, that's what the basic system is and that's what it does for you. I can envision putting pieces into this pot and they're just, just going to go to the float to the top, aren't they? They would, except we have these plates that go in and there's a cam on the plate. So we put that on top of the wood and lock the cam. It's called an anti-float plate for that very reason. Because, yes, it would float up. And then, of course, if they float up, the resin could start to get into your line and all sorts of things could happen. So the float plate keeps everything down so that the, the pieces are held down. What if you have small pieces that you want to put in that great big pot? Then we just put this container inside there and put our pieces in that. So now I can use maybe just a quart of resin instead of a gallon to cover my pieces and do a smaller batch that way. And we still pull the vacuum on the whole thing, but it just works. And on that's that what container. that float plate is and there? And that float plate fits into the smaller container to hold those down. This is used a lot when you're coloring because once you color the resin, it's colored. And so that lets you do smaller batches of color rather than having to, to color you know, large batches. Of, if if of I'm resin. pouring pouring some of this into there but it doesn't use it all, mm -hmm. can I reuse that? Absolutely. I can just uh, put it right back here in the yes, bottle? Yes, and even though this is a catalyst uh, mix, it's good after the catalyst is added up to a year. 
oh. until it reaches that critical temperature of 200 degrees. So yes, you can, you know, absolutely, you save all of it that isn't pulled into the wood and continue to use it until it's gone. Even that which has dye in it? Absolutely, it can still be used, obviously just with that color. Right. So that's our system. Uh, it's really very uh, broad in, in its scope of all the different things you can do, different sized pieces, and, and all of those things that are available. <laughs>